Okay, I will also uh, begin by thanking the organizers for inviting me. And with an apology, there is not a single equation in my uh, presentation. So the title of the presentation is Targeted Antifungal Nanomedicines. What are nanomedicines? These are nanoparticles of different shapes, sizes, and composition. What, do, what they have in common is that mm -hmm. some kind of a drug is encapsulated within the structure or carried on the surface of the structure. And that this whole package uh, has the purpose of reaching a diseased site, releasing the target in a timely and specially uh, manner. Now, our idea of a, a drug delivery system uh, is a little bit comp more complicated because uh, my group is an antibody engineering group, meaning that we have a special interest in the molecules that biologists know as antibodies, proteins that know how to bind very tightly and very precisely to other molecules. So a targeted drug delivery system has a drug at one end, which should be potent, very potent. Uh, and on the, on the other side, something that uh, gives it target specificity. Uh, in the middle, there would be the drug carrier, because usually for a single binding event of the target, of the targeting moiety, we want to be able to release a large number of drug molecules. Uh, now, what we are using as such a system is actually Sorry, this, uh, this guy, which is the filamentous bacteriophage, uh, it actually lo like, looks like this. This is a, a bacteriophage or a bacterial virus. It's a virus that grows inside bacteria. Uh, it looks like a long filament, as you can see in this TEM image. And it, it's actually a nanotube. It's, it has a protein coat on the surface uh, constructed of some 3,000 repeating units of a coat protein, and it has some minor pro co uh, coat proteins on, on the termini to seal the genetic material that sits inside the particle. And uh, we know how to genetically modify this particle and to chemically modify it, uh, modify it so we can do very nice tricks with it. And before you ask me, why are you using a virus for drug delivery, I can quote Sir Edmund Hillary when he was asked, why did you climb the Everest? Because it was there. So this particular particle is a favor. Uh, we, we use it very often for our day-to-day -day work in antibody discovery. And for many years, we've been able to put antibodies on this end of the particle. So actually, if we know how to put antibodies on the, on the end of the particle, we already have a targeted particle, and it's reduced to the matter of connecting drug to the particle uh, in a controlled manner. So to have or to convert this virus to a targeted drug delivery system, we must do several things. We must connect the correct antibody, the appropriate antibody on the end, to make it specific for the kind of target cells we want to target, diseased cells of many kinds, and on the surface of the molecule, we must connect our drug in such a way that we can have it released uh, at the time and place where we wish it to be released, whereas the particle itself, the nanotube, the virus, acts as the drug carrier. So again, Sorry, I'm moving in the wrong direction again. So actually, uh, this is the outline of our drug delivery system. And we've shown, uh, starting in 2006, the application of this system to deliver drugs to treat pathogenic bacteria or to treat cancer cells. But this is actually a modular system. So if we change the antibody at the end, we can target every disease cell that we can that we wish. We know how to isolate antibodies that bind anything. And if we change the drug and the release mechanism, we can also drug many different pathogens. And am I going in the wrong direction again? OK. So the research objectives of this particular project I'm telling it about today 
uh, was to develop and, and, and evaluate targeted non nanometric scale drug delivery system for antifungal drugs. Fungi are mushrooms or molds. They can be very nasty pathogens. Uh, and in particular, these drugs are characterized by their poor water solubility. I must switch to a mouse because this laser is, there is no mouse. I'll stay with the laser. So anyway, uh, and we, are, we, will, we are also aiming to evaluate the importance of targeting per se. Because with nanomedicines, uh, there are nanomedicines there that are called passively targeted ones, which button is that, okay. Passively targeted ones, meaning they diffuse into the site of action by means of an altered uh, blood, uh, a blood supply system, whereas our approach is called active targeting because we have a targeting molecule that selectively and actively binds to the target site uh, which and, and brings about a high concentration of drug at the site of action upon release of the drug. Ah, you switch the, okay. This is complicated for a biologist. Okay, anyway, <laughs> are you sure? Okay, so as I told you, uh, the aim here is to develop an antifungal system. So this is the fungus, Aspergillus formigatus. It's actually a black mold. You often see it on a stained red, uh, but it can also be a very nasty pathogen. Uh, and if it infects, in particular, immunocompromised people, cancer, cancer patients, people with immune deficiencies, it can create very nasty diseases, uh, even mortal ones. Here are some statistics of, of, uh, of disease events uh, with this fungus going up over the years. This is another uh, pathogen called, so this is Candida, which is another fungal pathogen. So uh, it's actually a very serious threat for which there are uh, unfortunately not very uh, many good solutions. The problem with targeting fungi with drugs is that Pretty much like our cells, fungi are eukaryotes, so they have cells that are, they are multicellular, uh, sorry, unicellular or multicellular organisms, but the basic cell unit, uh, all the, the, the physiological mechanisms are very similar to ours. So it's pretty diff uh, difficult to design drugs that will be selective to the pathogen and will not harm the host. So there are a few differences uh, between the, in the structure of, of a fungus and the human cell, mainly in the uh, envelope or the membrane of the fungus, which whereas in our membranes we have cholesterol, fungi have an, an, a different sterol called ergosterol, and most of the antifungal drugs uh, either block the synthesis of this ergosterol or uh, bind it like this drug, amphotericin B, which is the drug that we are using. So amphotericin B is this uh, drug, which structure is shown over here. It's a polyene drug, it's called a polyene. It, it's isolated from a microorganism. It's very, uh, it has very low water solubility, which by the way makes Chemist, uh, making chemistry with it for biologists who, who do chemistry in aqueous solutions and not uh, in organic solvents, quite challenging. And it's selective or partially selected for ergosterol and not or, or less so for cholesterol. It's actually believed to form a channel or a pore in the membrane of the fungus, causing the contents of the cell to leak and thereby killing, uh, killing the fungus. Uh, so it has many advantages. It's a very old drug. It has been used for over 50 years. So it's very potent. It has a very lo a long half-life. It's fungici uh, fungicidal, so it kills the fungi. Uh, and there are few cases of resistance. However, it's very toxic. And uh, it's not very easy to give it to patients. 
It has the various toxicity mechanisms, and as I told you, it's absolutely insoluble in water. So uh, to make uh, amphotericin B more friendly to us so we can conjugate it to our drug delivery systems, we had to solve uh, the solubility prob uh, problem and additional problems of toxicity. Uh, so uh, in collaboration with Alex Spielman from the Technion, my PhD student, uh, Asi Dergachev, who is showing the details of the chemistry in poster number two, did a series of modifications of the drug, basically putting a polyethylene glycol linker on one end of the drug and another modification to reduce toxicity on another end of the drug. And then this is the monomer of the coat protein of the virus to which we chemically connect the drug. It's connected by a cleavable linker. So actually, what happens here? What, what is the, how is this drug delivery system assembled? We begin with the drug delivery system. This is the bacteriophage. First, we conjugate this modified amphotericin B to the phage, so we have the drug delivery system. Then we fuse it or connect it to the antibodies. We have the whole system ready to be used. And the proposed mechanism of action is that the particle homes to the fungus. This is the a membrane of the fungus. It connects. Now, the release mechanism that we have genetically engineered causes the drug to be released by the action of proteases, cleaving ex enzymes that are actually released by the fungus itself. So actually, the pathogen triggers drug release upon itself. After the drug is being released, actually what we have is a high local concentration of free drug that accumulates at the membrane, creates the pores, and then the fungus dies. So first of all, we had to isolate antibodies that bind to the fungus. We did that quite successfully without going too much into the details of the isolation. These are ELISA assays showing that these antibodies bind, but uh, more convincingly so, if the lights were a little dimmer, here we, sh we can show uh, fluorescent microscope images of the, bind the antibodies themselves binding to the fungi, these red guys over here, or the phage particles with the antibodies uh, staining these fungi in red down here. So the targeting part of the system works. What about the release mechanism? So according to the literature, this Aspergillus fungus, the major protease it releases when it's in its pathogenic, pathogenic state is called ALP1. And according to the literature, it cleaves two tripeptides, FVR, phenylalanine, valine, arginine, or TIF, which is threonine, isoleucine, phenylalanine. Uh, so we've engineered the code protein to either code this sequence or that sequence, or as control, the unmodified sequence of the protein, and we, we measured how efficiently these sites are cleaved by the fungal protease. Now, I should tell you that we are not using the purified uh, protease. Rather, we are using what we call a fungal soup, or actually, it's the condition medium in which the fungi grow, which may contain a lot of proteolytic activities. So what we did is we took or we bought synthetic peptides that have fluorescein and a green fluorescent a molecule on one side and a biotin on the other side, and we bind, it, bind them to streptavidin ma magnetic beads, so we have a complex, now the beads are fluorescent. Now, if we expose these to fungal juice, and if the sequence here is cleaved, actually the beads become less fluorescent, as you can see in these flow cytometry images, now in a fax machine, usually when one looks at the positive signal, he looks for a signal that is shifted to the right. Usually we are looking for more fluorescence. Here it's the opposite. Here this stiff sequence in the middle, so without the fungal juice, it, it's in the middle here, 
And if there is cleavage or following exposure to the fungal juice, the signal is shifted to the left. When it's quantified, we see these graphs, the kinetics of release of the fluorescent dye. So again, the teeth sequence is, most, is cleaved more efficiently, the FVR less so. And if we, we use fungal juice from a fungus which is mutant, which does not express proteases, uh, the proteolysis is diminished. So actually, we know that the best sequence to use is actually the teeth sequence. So uh, we conjugated the drugs, the, 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 one of the drugs, the most efficient one that ASI made. You can see again the details in poster number two. Uh, and we tested how efficiently does these compounds kill the fungi. So on top in this table, you see some controls that do not have any drug. So the naked phage uh, with, an, uh, with an antibody, without an antibody, uh, no killing uh, at all. This is the free drug as a control, compound with the compound we call CE2. This is uh, the, the MIC, the minimal inhibitory concentration, or the concentration of the drug re required to inhibit the growth of the fungus, 2.6 micrograms uh, per ml. Now, here two ad additional controls. Th these are uh, the drug delivery systems, but they are not targeted. They are in solution. So we get mix that are not very different from that of the free drug because the protease does cleave and release the drug, but it's, it diffuses in the solution. It's not targeted. Only in the last one down here where we have the antibody and the, and the bacteriophage and the drug, we get this type of mix which actually represent a 500-fold in potency of the system. Now, what is important with a drug delivery system is to make sure that it's not toxic. So we have here two toxicity assays to see if, the, if we don't only see improvement, but also do we have a safe system. On the left, we have a hemolytic assay. We mix the compounds with human red blood cells. Now, this amphotericin B, the original molecule that was not modified, because it's hydrophobic, it's also very hemophilic. It means that if you mix it with red blood cells, they explode and you see red color in the test tube. So again, we can see here two of the compounds, CE2, which you saw in the previous slide, and another one, which is called CB1. The green one is amphotericin B, so you can see that amphotericin B, the original unmodified molecule, is very hemolytic. We, we, this is one concentration we, we tested several. And our compounds down here are hardly hemolytic at all. On the right-hand side, we see another toxicity assay. Again, looking for non-specific toxicity. So here we exposed, uh, in this case, embryonic fibroblasts, cells growing in culture to varying concentration of compounds on the on this uh, ex axis, and we measure the cell viability. And here we can see again, the unmodified amphotericin B is very toxic. It kills the cells at very low concentrations. However, our compounds are strongly shifted to the right, meaning that are either very less toxic, this is compound CB1, or, con uh, or compound CE2, in which up to the level of solubility, we see no non-specific toxicity at all. What does it mean? Or to conclude, a targeted nanomedicine based of, on antibody-targeted phage carrying modified amphotericin B is efficacious. It means it's effective. It kills 500-fold uh, more effectively than the free drug and has reduced toxicity. And we can see the contribution of active targeting, the fact that the antibody is there. Uh, it, it's already evident at, this, at, the, uh, at the in vitro stage, meaning killing fungi in a test tube. Uh, the real significance of targeting is actually to be observed in uh, animal studies. So the future plans are actually to do the in vivo evaluation, in vivo meaning in a live animal. The model here is mice that are infected 
with a lethal dose of fungi, which if left untreated, the mice die within a few days. Uh, if you will see uh, Asi's poster, you can see that we've, with, with the free drugs themselves, we've been able to cure the mice very nicely. And uh, making other targeted antifungal uh, nanomedicine based on chemical nanoparticles like alginate nanoparticles and, and so on. So we are very fond of, of our virus nanoparticles, but we, kept, we keep being told that these are not really drugs. Uh, so uh, basically every chemical nanoparticle that can be chemically modified uh, can actually be conjugated uh, with antibodies for targeting. The drugs can be chemically bound to it because uh, we use very uh, simple uh, chemistry tools to conjugate the, the drugs to the particles. To, so this is expected to be the next generation of this story. So to conclude, I would like uh, to acknowledge the people that uh, did the work. So this is a long list of all the students I ever had in my lab. Uh, the ones that are marked in red uh, did the early work uh, with the uh, nanoparticles or nanomedicines that kill bacteria or kill cancer cells. Uh, this is ASI with poster number two. Uh, with the antifungal anti experiments, we, are, we have been collaborating uh, with Professor Nir Oshrov from the Faculty of Medicine in our university. And I told you we're, we're, for the chemistry part, we've, we, we are collaborating with Alex Spielman from the Technion, who is a long-time uh, uh, expert in, modif in chemically modifying uh, amphotericin B. It was upon a personal recombination of uh, Doron Shabbat, who uh, miraculously escaped this uh, conference. But uh, anyway, it's not trivial to do uh, chemistry in water-based solutions with such nasty molecules. There, there are lessons to be learned here for everybody. Uh, so I thank everyone who participated in this heroic effort for their efforts, and you for listening so patiently. Uh, no, actually, there is not. <laughs> Hi. Very nice talk. Uh, two questions. Maybe they are related. If you try to do the same essay about uh, the release, we just, uh, uh, with, with, uh, not with the soup of uh, fungi uh, proteases, but with uh, specific proteases, do you have any increase in, uh, in release? And the second one, which is uh, related, how much out of the drug is actually getting uh, released out of the virus? Can you upload it more? Are you only releasing a fraction of your, of your drug? What do you know about that? So actually, uh, from uh, the previous systems we, we've worked with and with this one, uh, the fungal proteases have their own release kinetics. In these release experiments, we also used a, a common a general protease called proteinase K, which degrades any protein or peptide sequence, and it's faster. But actually, the, the important thing is, does, does it get the job done? So uh, from the results we see so far, the release kinetics by the uh, fungal protease itself are sufficiently rapid to allow efficient killing and increase in, in potency. Whether it's complete release, uh, so actually since you have asked, <laughs> there are nest so, so biology pr uh, plays nasty tricks with us. If we look here at this, so we have here this, uh, aspartate and glutamate amino acids, these are the free amines we use to conjugate the drugs, okay? And after that, we have the cleavage site. So when the protease cleaves here, the drug replaces this fluorescence, is released. Unfortunately, if you look closely, we have two aspartates here, which are, cut, which are a part of the wild, type, uh, the wild type sequence. Now these, so actually we are wasting, when we conjugate drug, we are wasting a part of the drug which gets attached 
to the lysine groups of these two aspartates. Unfortunately, no matter how clever and uh, knowledgeable we are about mutating sequences of the, of the code, the biology of the virus does not allow us to change these into different amino acids. So to answer your question, no, the drug release is not complete, but it's sufficient. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with ambisome, which is amphotericin B in liposomes. Did you think about taking your specific antibodies and binding it to the surface of ambisome? So as I said it, at the end, we are very open-minded. Never mind. We are very open-minded to translate further our approach to different uh, nanoparticles. Liposomes are no exception. Did you test uh, the toxicity of the drug in the presence of uh, what we call uh, fungal juice? Because in vivo, the fungal might, might uh, secrete the protease and they pre-activate the drug uh, actually before it reached the fungi and then uh, uh, hit the, the cells, the, the human cells. So the, question, the, the answer to this particular question is no, because we have not gone into mice with the particles that carry the drugs. We have only done that with the free drugs. But this, of course, is one of the things that will be tested. Uh, while showing a very good uh, efficacy, uh, did you concern about uh, immune response and how do you uh, engineer the bacteriophage in order to avoid the immune response? So uh, the, the question before the last or two before that were if the phage, uh, the bacteriophage is really the ideal nanoparticle to work with, and I very honestly say, said no, it is not because... One of the, the reasons for that is because bacteriophages uh, are immunogenic in people. However, in previous studies that we did, we used uh, different chemical approaches to uh, link drugs to this particle, and we found out that since we conjugate the drug at high density at the periphery of the particle, we actually reduce immunogenicity very much by by many orders of magnitude. Still, this is not an ideal particle, although another thing to bear in mind that this is not a particle intended for cancer patient, uh, patients. Uh, these are fungal infections uh, which are uh, acute diseases that uh, are supposed to be treated by a single or a few do doses of medicine. So this kind of uh, clinical regime uh, is, is a type where immunogenicity is not, is not very much a concern. But yes, uh, so the viruses are not ideal drug carriers. Okay, so let's take some